when I was eight or nine, I saw something weird on Christmas Eve. This was many, many years ago, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. I still believed in Santa Claus then, as a good amount of children do, and I had the usual anxiety and excitement for Santa to leave Christmas presents by the tree. After I went to bed, I had some trouble going to sleep with holiday nerves and such. I had finally drifted off when I woke up to the sound of soft footsteps somewhere in my room. I automatically assumed it was Santa Claus, and I was scared to see him for fear he might leave or his magic would fail. I opened one eye just barely and saw this black figure standing over my bed, staring at me. It was tall, probably around six feet tall, and was completely dark. It looked almost blacker than black in a way. I couldn't see any eyes, a mouth, or a nose on it, but I could clearly see the outline of a head, arms, body, and legs. It looked like a bigger person, so thinking it was Santa just made sense. It stayed in one spot for 10, maybe 15 seconds, until it took a few steps closer. It leaned in a little more, still a few feet away from me, and then stayed there for 10 or 15 seconds more. Even though I couldn't see a face, I knew it was looking right at me. It's just that weird feeling you get when you know you're being watched or looked at. I closed my eyes again and waited for a few minutes. When I looked back, it was gone. I lived in a pretty old house at the time, so the doors and floorboards were squeaky and loud. I heard footsteps, but I'd never heard the door open. I never saw this figure again, though I've had some other spooky experiences in this house. I asked my mom if she heard Santa when he came into my room last night, and she looked confused for a second. Then she played along and just assumed I was lying. I know this wasn't a person, and I know this wasn't a dream. I also know that spirits and entities are often attracted to lots of excitement or energy, so Christmas would be a perfect time for a ghost to pass through. I recently moved back in with my dad. I'm 19 years old and lived by myself a few blocks from him in a small town. He moved across the country and I decided at the last minute to come with because I didn't want to be alone. Because of my last minute decision, my dad's house wasn't necessarily big enough. So he finished the basement and turned it into a gorgeous room for me. I've been told I have a very active imagination. In my old house, I often heard strange noises in the attic. My first thought was that there was someone living up there, rather than a more plausible squirrel or mice. I saw a video once of a family who had someone living upstairs and they didn't know. I'd never get it out of my head. Because of my active imagination, anything I worry about isn't taken seriously. I'm an adult who's scared of the monsters in my closet. Well, tonight, I experienced something I cannot explain. I'm sitting on my bed around 2 a.m., playing with my hair and scrolling through Facebook. Then I heard what here sounds like something heavy slide across my carpet. The best way I can describe it is someone pushing a huge piece of furniture across it. I stopped, I looked around, analyzed everything in my room and couldn't really see anything out of place. I started to wonder if maybe Maybe I've left the door open and an animal got in. I investigated, moved things around and found no animal. So I went upstairs to calm myself down and grab a glass of water. Once I finally decide to go back downstairs, I open my bedroom door and I watch my clean and folded clothes get picked up and pushed to the other side of the full tote they're in. I haven't finished unpacking yet and have all of my clothes filled to the brim in these plastic bins. I watched my clothes move along with the tote on their own. Almost as if someone stuck their hands under all the clothes on one side and threw them up to the other side. The tote also moved slightly. It tilted up due to the weight of all my clothes on one side and just fell back down. I called my younger sister as I ran upstairs and she laughed it off and brought me a pillow and blanket to the couch. 
I am paranoid, but also I know what I saw. I'm terrified to tell my family because they constantly tease me for being immature. I can't watch horror movies. I can't watch or hear scary stories. I can't even watch shows like Supernatural without convincing myself everything in it could be real. What if it is? I should be worried. It's such a dilemma when I'm constantly scared and paranoid. These crazy things can happen to me. And when I see something genuinely scary, I feel like the boy who cried wolf. I remember as a little girl, always being in tune with the paranormal. Seeing my grandfather and his mom, who I never met, was a common occurrence as a child as they died in the family home. As of today, the home is a hundred years old. My great-grandfather built it with money he earned from owning a gambling den and pool hall. It was a humble home. In that time, four people died in that home from old age and sickness, alongside countless pets. However, this is the horrible aura of seething hatred that resides in the home. Ever since I was young, the house instilled a sense of grave fear, and I could always feel a horrible presence. Many house guests over the years would also complain about feeling something evil nearby. My mom, brother and myself would see a haunting black shadow figure with piercing red eyes. However, it wasn't truly human in appearance. It had a long, featureless face, long, gnarly fingers and a tall body that would contort. You could always feel him watching you, even when he did not manifest. He would call your name in the day and at night, distinct male voice, hence why I call it a he. When he would manifest, you would see him either on the ground, crouching and cocking his head at you, his hands pry open doors, and yes, they would open enough for him to peer at you with those eyes, and he'd cling to the walls like Spider-Man and stare at you while slowly making his way towards you. He would back away and look confused if you spoke to him or asked for help. I believe he caused physical harm to myself and others. My dad and my ex-husband would feel someone sitting on them and strangling them at night. Once, I woke up with scratches on my face after seeing him in my bed. He traumatized me for years since I always had insomnia. My mom for years was convinced someone sent a demon on her, but it never followed her or us when we moved. He can't leave the house. I live next door now in another home my family built. You can feel and occasionally see him stare at you from the windows when you're outside the home, especially in the evenings around 3 a.m. You don't feel his presence in the sense of dread until you enter the threshold. My husband feels it every time he goes to visit and has seen the being the one time he slept over almost six years ago. We were talking about him last night and my husband mentioned in detail that I used to see and hear his behavior. He, of course, had to insult the creature when he was creeping towards us by calling him an ugly bastard, but he's seen worse. That apparently confused him and left him alone after that. Over the decades, the house has been blessed and Quanderos have been called to help, but he remains watching, instilling fear and calling you. We don't know what he is or how to get rid of it. I feel like something ties him to our him. My gut tells me that he was murdered long ago and tries to instill the same fear he felt when dying. Any help or advice? My brothers live there now. I want to be able to visit them with my daughter after she's born and not feel this hatred. First of all, this took place around midnight two years ago. I was living in a small town surrounded by forests in a block of flats. Whole neighborhood was block of flats. When I was playing on my console with my friends, my parents were going to sleep, so I told them I need to be quieter than usual. They got tired and went to sleep. When I was playing alone, I got really thirsty, so I went to the kitchen to get myself some water. Everything was good, like every night. Everything is quiet, 
no people playing loud music. I could say that it was the perfect time to relax, but I noticed something weird. It was a lot quieter than every other night. It was like, okay, that's cool. I'll finally get some rest. I was horribly wrong. I had a window open to let in some fresh air in my room. And I think that it was a mistake to open the window that night. I was on my phone when I heard a cat, I think, screaming. When this happened, it started to get weirder every minute. I knew something was off because after that, the wind stopped. Next thing that happened was that weird feeling that is with you every time when you feel like something will happen. Then I heard this growl. I can tell it wasn't any animal because it didn't sound like an animal. When I heard that, I was really scared. When I calmed down, I went to sleep. In the morning, I decided to check out if there were any clues that will help identify that creature, but sadly there was nothing. Today, I think this growl came from the basement, which is haunted. Why haunted? The lights in the basement were new at that moment and they were literally going off and on. Next thing is weird noises, even in daytime. Third thing is that there is something in that basement. Me and my friends decided to go there and check it out and the first thing that happened was a loud bang on the doors next to us. That door leads to a room where you can let your clothes dry but when I opened that door, there was nothing. So, it all started at a moment when I was living in my own apartment. Life was okay though, I felt helpless sometimes. At some point, I started to have nightmares. The first one was with something looking like a decaying zombie who would run to me while screaming. After this, I then stayed eight hours in my apartment, still in the dream, in darkness, where I would try to find things to light up the place. Every time it would get too dark, the screaming thing would come to me again, and I could only push it back by screaming myself. In the middle of the thing, I found a light who worked, for five seconds before going off. Other lights didn't work. At this period of my life, I had this horrible dream that was extremely realistic. Problem is, it didn't stop there. I had other dreams similar, like being in my kitchen and the light didn't work, while some shadow figure started to cover the window. If this was only bad dreams, honestly, I'll be okay with it. The thing is that during that time, which lasted about a month or two, all lights went off in real life. I had four lights in my apartment that stopped working. I had the headlights of my car stop working too. A friend gave me a desk lamp that exploded while at 30 centimeters from my face. Luckily, it didn't hit me. I had some electrician friends to whom I've shown the light bulb and they were puzzled. They never saw a lamp break this way. Now, it's okay. It lasted a bit of time. About six to seven lights went off. I had nightmares but it stopped. Since then, I still get from time to time similar nightmares. In one, I see a friend and try to talk to him, but the only sound that comes out is like a roar. In all of them, lights don't work. In the last one I had some days ago, I saw another friend. I remember saying that it wasn't really my friend and he started laughing in a very frightening way. The big problem I have is that I fear it starts again. After this last dream, one light started to flicker. I know somehow that it's all about an issue I have that I should resolve, but I don't really know what to do. I made this post hoping someone will eventually have some hindsight on this. Around mid-August 2021, my sister was walking her friend home and it was about 9 p.m. and he lives down the same road as us. Mentioning we do live out in the boonies in southwest Montana. And as soon as they left the house, the TVs lost signal, but it was a clear night. You could see all the stars. She then comes running back inside and this is what she said happened. She kept hearing someone yelling coming from the north side of the end of our road. 
She said she thought someone was arguing and it was short bursts of a male yell. Then, when they walked down the road a little further, she heard the man yelling in the woods next to them. They stopped and just listened until it did it again and that's when they ran inside. About 10 or 15 minutes after they came in, the TV's back on. Nothing happened for about a week after that until one day I got home from a friend's house, probably around 1 to 4 p.m. And I actually heard the yelling my sister was talking about. It was exactly how she described it, but it was coming from our backyard, which is also a wooded area. I was spooked, so I didn't go check it out, but this is where everything started to kick off. My sister never had any more experiences after this, but that night, I heard the yelling the tapping started. And it's not knocks or taps in three, it's like one, two, one, two. With about one second between the first two, then the second two are right after each other. The first time I heard it, I was laying in bed and it was tapping on my window around 3 p.m. So it was still daylight then, on the wall right by my bed where my head lays. My window is about six feet off the ground. On the wall, my bed is about entered 10 feet off the ground. After it happened, I looked out my window and I didn't see anything. I asked my dad if he had tapped on my window and he said he didn't and my sister isn't home. This same pattern of tapping almost every day since this happened, or at least four to five times a week. The end of October, I was looking for something in my car and was walking back up the house. And it was raining and I had my hood up and I heard someone yell my name very angrily. It sounded very close. It sounded just like my mom, but she was at work at the time. I ran inside and asked my dad if he called me. He said no and we kind of patrolled the area and didn't see anything. At this point, I legitimately thought I was going crazy. Nobody I talked to believed me or told me not to worry about it until my boyfriend and I we're just sitting in this truck at the end of my road because there's no houses down there. It's quiet and that's our favorite thing to do, just sit in his truck. We stayed out late. It was probably 4 a.m. My landlord owns a ranch and it extends to where my road ends and we were petting the ponies and he said, I think we should go back to the truck. I feel like there's something over there. And right as he finished saying that, all the ponies ran away from the spot he was talking about so we got to the truck, sat and talked for a while, and the tapping stated happening again to me. It sounded like it was on the truck, but he said he heard it in the distance, but it was very soft. It went continuously for about three minutes, which is the longest it happened. It stopped for 20 pull minutes, then started again. We ended up leaving the area 45 minutes later, and his truck was making weird ass noises like it wasn't wanting to keep moving. He said it's never done it in the past, but it is a 2010. A couple of days ago, my boyfriend introduces me to one of his friends who claims to be a psychic medium. And my boyfriend didn't tell him my story or anything. But as soon as we were walking into his house, he said he felt a negative presence in the room. And when I was in the bathroom, he told my boyfriend he saw it, but didn't want to explain what he saw but I do remember him carrying his Bible around. For a little more context, I've lived here for 14 years and this is the only time something like this has happened. The only thing that changed before all of this happened is I had to foster a dog and gave him away to a new home. We only have one neighbor that is close to our house and they just moved in. No one in my family has met them yet. Besides my sister, no one else in the house has experienced anything. And my sister hasn't experienced anything after the first time it happened. Around 2011, my family was on vacation in the Los Angeles area. My mother is a fan of strange museums, so she would practically drag us kids along to these weird places. She decided we should go to the Queen Mary Museum as it had a reputation for being a haunted tourist trap. I was young and very much afraid of that sort of stuff, 
but I didn't want to look like a wimp in front of my siblings, so I didn't object to going. Plus, I had just gotten a new iPod Touch and wanted to take photos with it. The ship itself was ancient and sort of run down, but the interior was pretty nice and it had that old school classy charm. We started the ghost tour and ventured into the inner rooms of the ship. The tour had rooms where we would stop and watch these special effects of ghosts. And of course, that freaked me out. So I clung to the back of the group with my older brother, who's kind of a prankster, but is our protector. I covered my eyes for most of the rest of the tour as the fake ghosts and loud noises completely terrified me. My older brother would do his typical teasing of tapping me on the shoulder and moving away when I turned my head. He did this a few times until I turned around and told him to quit it. Shockingly, it actually worked and he stopped tacking me, which was I was of character for him as normally he would just mess with me more. The tour ended and we went around the rest of the ship taking photos and enjoying our time there. It wasn't until we got off the ship that my brother pulled me aside with a horrified look and told me that when I told him to stop messing with me, he felt a tap on his shoulder. He said he turned around and nobody was there. I believed him as we were in the back of the tour with nobody behind us. Looking back, I think he may have been messing with me again, but it's hard to get a straight answer from him. My mom used to tell me that I refused to sleep in my room because I kept telling her that there was a hanged man in the closet. I don't remember much of it since I was a child. I would throw tantrums because I wouldn't sleep in my room, so she made me sleep in the living room. She also told me that she would hear my bed moving during the night, and when she woke up to see what was happening, she saw my bed in the other side of the room with my clothes all over the floor. We moved out and this thing kept following me wherever I went. When I was nine, I was still living in the same city as when I was four. I woke up during the night and saw a hanged man approaching me. I was in the same room as my sister and we slept in a bunk bed since it would make more room for other furniture. I saw what I think was a Roman soldier decaying and approaching me. I slept in the bed that was on the top and my sister slept in the bottom bed. One night there was a storm and we decided to keep the windows closed to avoid having to deal with water the next day. The door was closed because my mom wanted to keep an eye on us since we didn't always listen to her as kids. Then the door was violently shut. I started laughing because that's what I do when I'm nervous and my sister was crying because she got scared. At the time my mom was in the living room with my stepfather. They asked us if we did this. We said no. We were talking asleep and we heard the door shutting like someone closed it out of anger. This was in 2013. I stopped seeing the soldier and moved out to my dad since my dad was neglecting us and abused drugs in our care. I'm currently 18 years old and I've seen the soldier hanged near my boyfriend's TV. It was dark but I could still see the same Roman soldier. My boyfriend told me a couple of days ago that he felt like the bed was moving when we were asleep. The thing hasn't done anything other than scare the living hell out of me. This thing has followed me since I was four years old. I've had other similar things happen to me, but without seeing the Roman soldier. I have a dog and a couple days ago, he wouldn't come into the room. I even offered to let him go to bed since he wasn't always allowed to do so. He left with his ears flattened and growled at something that was behind me. I grabbed my cat who was sleeping and said, hell no, I'm not doing this shit, and closed my bedroom door and went to the living room and waited for my boyfriend to arrive from work. I asked him if he could go check the room and he went and didn't find anything. My dog went into the room and acted like everything was good now. This happened maybe two years ago, while riding quads with my boyfriend. It wasn't too late at night, maybe around 10pm. We were camping at our campground, where we have a small trailer surrounded by other camps. 
In the summer, it's full of kids running around and adults on golf carts. But it was late December and we're one of the few people who go up in the winter since it gets pretty cold and they shut the water off. The woods are a decent bit away from the actual campground. It gets pretty quiet out there and something about the snow just makes everything quieter. I've always felt slightly uncomfortable in the woods at night. My boyfriend told me I was just a paranoid person and I chalked it up to me reading too much creepy paster as a kid. I always felt somewhat safer since we were on a quad and we can go pretty fast if needed. So there we are in the middle of the night enjoying a cold ride, drifting in the snow when all of a sudden we come to a stop. That's when I got an eerie feeling. I asked him why we stopped and it was something along the lines of his glove or something on the quad came off. He turned the quad off and bent over messing with something. I start looking behind me and around me because I'm just someone who's super aware of their surroundings. I look to my left and I see a brown skinny tree that always freaks me out because I mistake it as something else. But then I look to the right of the scary tree and see something even taller and pale looking. I immediately avert my attention from it being totally freaked out. I find the courage to look back and it seems closer. At this time, I didn't have my glasses on and was just saying it's another tree that looks like a person and I'm fine. Before I could say anything to my boyfriend, he had finished whatever he was doing and we took off. I buried my face in the back of his jacket, too afraid to see anything else. Still having that feeling of being watched over me, I asked if we could go back to camp and he agreed since it was so cold. I decided not to say anything to him since he'd want to go back and investigate or straight up not believe me and write me off as paranoid again. And I didn't want to go back there at all. I figured the following day we would go back into the woods during daytime and I would see that there was another tree that I never noticed before. But when we went back though, and there was nothing next to the brown tree, that's when my stomach dropped. That's also when I told him I saw something last night. He told me I should have told him, which he was right. I should have said something, but I was just too scared and just kept it to myself. We still go up there occasionally, not as much due to our jobs now, but I've never experienced anything else after that. A little backstory about the spare room. When I first bought my home last year, there was a family of around 13 people living in it, six of which were adults. Three small bedrooms and one sketchy annex in the garage. A year later, and the neighborhood is still telling me stories about how awful these people were as neighbors. The annex room was initially shoddy framing and drywall work, presumably installed by that family. The walls were painted a weird green color and the rug was a wrinkly stained mess. It became apparent that someone had been peeing in all four corners of the room. I figured it might just be pets, but there was a mirror that had please help me written on it in makeup and the room locked from outside. The day we got our keys, I got called to respond to the Seattle riots with my National Guard unit and was gone for about a month. During that time, my wife and the in-laws began renovating the home to make it livable. I felt guilty being unable to help. My wife got together with my mom to confirm that scary extra room into a man cave slash jam room with all my music equipment and memorabilia. It came out really nice, but I haven't found much time to use it in the past year. A couple of months ago, I built a gaming PC and decided to set it up in that room. Now that I've been going in there almost daily, things have started to feel a little strange around the house. I get the sensation someone is standing directly behind me, once or twice a day in the room. Our TV set on fire in the living room a few weeks ago. Our water main burst last weekend, causing us to dig our yard up over the course of three days. And my garage light keeps turning on and off. I can hear the light switch. This morning I got out of the shower to find that my wife had already left for work. I'm coming down the hall and I hear her clearly say, 
Hey babe? From the spare room at the side of the house. I replied, you're still here? To which I got silence. I looked out the front window and sure enough, her truck was gone. That's when I heard it again. Babe, come here. I grabbed my things and nope to work, lol. Anyway, when I was pulling out of the driveway, I could hear what sounded like a girl screaming from outside, followed by a bang. I stopped before backing into the street thinking, was that my phone? I waited for a second before continuing on my way, thinking it might be the school across the street. I got about 50 feet down the road before I heard it again. This time it was faint, but sounded like it was coming from in the car. I paused at the stop sign and rolled down the windows to see if it would happen again, as it had sounded identical to the first one. Nothing. I roll up my windows and continue on my way to find that it happened several more times, almost like a recording. Same scream and bang over and over for another mile or so. Anyway, I'm weirded out for the day. Might sage later and bang some pants together, I don't know. A few weeks ago, I couldn't sleep. So at about 4am, I went to the studio I take a class in for college to get some work done. While there, there was one other person there named Peter. I don't feel bad using his real name because as far as I can tell, he doesn't exist. I said hi, we chatted while I worked. I watched the sunrise. He said he had to get back to work on the other side of the building, separate studio, but I walked past it on my way in. And I said okay and waved. He took a few steps away and said, weird, isn't it? I think he wasn't facing me. And since I'm bad at hearing, I assumed I misheard him and laughed it off. I swear, 20 minutes after the sun was all but fully in the sky, which I know because the section outside the building is very empty, but without me realizing it, it was rising, again. The sky had gone back to dark, and the sun was cresting again. I went down and told Peter, and he found it funny. I've looked for him on my way in every day since then, since I saw where he sat. Someone else sits there, and I don't know them well enough to ask. I recently moved a few minutes away from my old house in rural Illinois. My old house was situated on a farm with 40 acres of land. Me and my sister have had our fair share of creepy and maybe paranormal happenings, but nothing this bad. And I'm afraid that whatever that lived on our property there has followed us to our new house. Backstory. My sister takes one of our dogs to check on our houses in the paddock because they were making noise. She says she hears something behind her and turns around to see an eight foot plus unnaturally skinny thing with antlers. She had said she fell on the ground and was paralyzed with fear. As she was laying, the dog, who will cower at anything, goes into full attack mode and starts to go crazy. At that point, I run outside with my aunt and we see her on the ground. No ungodly being. I was very skeptical, until two months later. I go to my friend's house who lives right down the road on Halloween for a sleepover. And he shows me two videos from his security camera. The first showed a pale arm hanging over their front porch. The second video showed a finger touching the lens of the camera and a long arm reaching up. Something to keep in mind is that the deck where the camera is situated is around 12 feet above ground. In the middle of all this, his parents see what we are doing and get super mad and scold him about how these videos were not to be shown to anyone. They then went into the other room and the rest of the sleepover went normal without anything of that nature happening again. But that is what kind of kickstarted the whole paranormal and cryptic craze. Present day, as of about two months ago, I had a dream where I was with my dad, sister and friends, 
going to an old amusement park of sorts. This place was indoors with the exception of a paintball arena outside and had a jungle gym, arcade, birthday rooms, etc. The place has been shut down for years and in the dream, it looked way more dilapidated than what it looks like in real life. When we parked the car, my vision zoomed up to the roof and it had a deer with blood all over it. The deer appeared to be dead and lying there. We get closer to the building and my vision zooms up to the sign and now the deer is staring at me with a gigantic smile full of human teeth and saliva dripping down onto the pavement. At this point, I was a bit unnerved, but we still went inside. The inside of this place looked just how it did when I was a kid with everything in perfect condition. I turned my back on my group for maybe 10 seconds to look at the prizes they had. And when I turned back, the whole place turns into what it looked like on the outside. Everything is rotting and no lights, except for one. One single light is shining on my group. The people you thought were my friends and family were now gray and pale, black eyes with blood coming out of their mouth and pointing at me with a black expression. The deer comes behind them and they all, including the deer, start saying, let death erupt, you're going to die. You're going to die with your eyes wide open. It started as a whisper and upped in volume until they were all practically screaming. I woke up, but right beforehand, the deer said one thing that I still have imprinted in my brain. Remember me, and then said my name. I had the same dream last night and nothing changed except the deer. It had grown to around what I think is around double its old size. Tonight, I went out to lock up our chicken coop. I was walking back inside and heard, remember me, my name? And shortly after, come closer. I told you, remember me. The voice sounded like me, but had an odd and sinister undertone. It sounded like an impressionist who tried to impersonate me, but had smoked for 30 years. Very raspy and false. This leads me to right now. Nothing else has happened and it all stopped the second I got inside. I've told nobody. I will not anybody. So, some background for my issue. I've lived in my current home for about two years. We bought the house and moved in at the beginning of the pandemic. After we moved in, the estranged husband of the owner told us that the owner had passed away in the house exactly a year before we bought it. Spooky part one. The owner's name was Donna Johnson. She had a husband who she had been separated with, but never legally divorced, and a son named Hunter. She was very social and loved holding parties at the house, and was very athletic and loved to exercise. Donna died after drinking heavily, and falling down a flight of four stairs. Spooky part two. Now comes for the coincidences. The landing of these stairs is maybe a foot from the doorway of my room, and my room used to be Donna's exercise room. So it's needless to say that I've felt her around a lot. When I first moved into the house, I had Zoom for school, which meant I was sitting in my room for most of the day with the door closed. That's meant, of course, that I was alone and no one else was in my room, but maybe 15 to 20 times a day, I would feel someone watching me from my doorway. I would turn to look and the door was still closed. And of course, no one was there. As I stayed there longer, I would feel someone watching me from closer and closer until it felt like she was looking over my shoulder. Now I should clarify that her presence never felt malicious. She always felt like a lonely mother looking to take care of someone. At this point, I would talk to her in a lowered voice and just acknowledge her presence whenever I felt it because her energy seemed to lighten when I did. I grew to like Donna's presence and she would even come and stand by my bed while I went to sleep. She felt like a nice aunt or grandmother. However, she wasn't the only one I felt or saw. There was one night that I was getting ready for bed the light was still on and I was watching Netflix in bed. My door opened just a crack 
and I expected one of my teenage siblings to walk in. But a little boy, maybe around six years old, wearing a Spider-Man t-shirt and black sneakers, walked in holding a kid's water bottle. He walked maybe three feet into my room and dissolved, starting with his feet going to his head. He was just gone. I looked back at my door and it was still ajar. I instinctively called this boy Anton. I don't know why, it just fit. The only other time I physically saw Anton was a time he walked into my room wearing and holding the same things. It was just like before, but arguably more frightening. He crawled up onto my bed while I was sitting at my desk and just swung his feet for a bit before dissolving again. Anton never felt dangerous, but his energy felt negative. I felt him around other times, but I would never feel Donna and Anton at the same time. The only other issue I had with Donna was a time when I woke up in the middle of the night. There was no reason for me to be awake. I felt fine, but I just couldn't sleep. So I did the usual, get up, get some water, go to the bathroom, all that jazz. But when I was walking to the kitchen to get some water, I was bombarded with energy. I felt Donna there, but there were so many entities that it was overwhelming. I could tell I wasn't welcome. There was one energy in particular which felt very, very, very malicious that I remembered clearly. I felt that spirit several times and it terrifies me. Donna's presence faded slightly after that. One day, there was a wildfire and we were forced to evacuate. As I was grabbing my stuff to leave, I felt Donna's presence super, super strong. I could feel her telling me that she had to go take care of her son. Once I came back to my house after the fire, I maybe felt her once or twice, but she really was gone. The only spirit I still feel in my house is the malicious one. The fuck does this mean? My family moved from the UK to Ireland in 1999 when I was 12, and my brother was nine. We moved to the town where my mother is originally from. She had a lot of family there, but her dad had passed away years earlier. We moved into an unfinished new build bungalow in a small neighborhood. Apparently, the husband of the couple who originally started building it died before it was completed and it stood empty for a few years before she sold it onto us. I'm skeptical as to whether that is relevant or not, but I added it just in case. We had been there less than a year, when one night my mum, who's a very light sleeper, woke to a bang around 3am. We had this little fish shaped radio that stuck to the wall in the shower, and she thought maybe it had come loose and fallen down. So she got up to check, but there was nothing out of place. Before she went back to bed, she went to check in on me and my brother. Both of our bedroom doors were closed. I'm not sure which room she checked first, but when she looked into the room, the blankets were folded back and the bed was empty. She went straight to the other room thinking maybe we were in the same room or something, although that wasn't something we'd done before. But again, when she opened the door, the blankets were folded back and the bed was empty. At that point, she understandably panicked, woke my dad and they started looking for us. They walked to the sitting room, the door is closed. When they open the door and turn on the light, they find us seemingly sound asleep. They both firmly agree that my brother and I looked as though we'd been picked up out of our beds and cradled under our knees and neck and then placed down in the sitting room. Him across an armchair, and me on the couch. I can remember them waking me up. I felt like I had been in a really deep sleep. I was super tired. The lights really hurt my eyes and I was confused. They were asking what had happened, but I had no idea how I got there or why my brother was there as well. My brother doesn't have any real memory of being woken up at all, but I remember it took them a minute or two to wake him up. The next day, my dad joked that we must have been abducted by aliens or something, which I thought was pretty funny at the time. 
For context, neither me nor my brother had any history of sleepwalking or sneaking out of our rooms for that matter. We never really spent much time together. We'd usually be in our own rooms doing our own thing. I never had any fears or trouble sleeping after it happened. I wasn't scared. I would quite often have dreams though, where I would suddenly shoot up off the ground, hundreds of meters into the night sky, and I'd be looking down at the ground as I went up. Every time I had this dream, I was always looking down over the neighborhood where we lived. I can never remember what I was dreaming before I'd fly away, and I'd wake up before I ever landed. I don't have the dream often anymore, maybe once or twice a year. My parents still live in the house 21 years later. There's often been bumps in the night and odd happenings since that night. Like the time my mum got up for work one morning and found a passport sized photo of her dad beside the kettle. Or they'll get up some mornings and the attic stairs will be open. Their dogs sometimes growl at absolutely nothing. Although all of those things seem pretty easily explainable. The photo was in the top of the cupboard above the kettle. It most likely fell out. The catch on the attic stairs can sometimes stick. So most likely it just wasn't fully secured. And well, she's a highly anxious dog. So I don't put too much weight on her growling either. Either way, my parents don't pay much attention to any of these occurrences. So they're not bothered by it. I have absolutely no explanation for what happened that night though. Neither do my parents. I never really spoke about it to anyone ever since because it just sounds like some crazy story. But how did we get there? And without making a sound? How were all the doors closed behind us? Why doesn't my brother remember? This is not something that scares or worries me at all. I'm more curious than anything. Has anyone else ever experienced anything like this? Or have any logical explanation as to what might have happened? Well, back in 2011, me and my family went to Thailand and we rented a house in the countryside since we were building a summer house nearby and it wasn't finished. We were there for about one month and the house we were in was super cheap in rent. Way too cheap to rent for a whole month. So anyway, nothing weird with the house at first, besides like cool breeze, which I at first thought it was because the house was really close to a national park and cool winds might have just blown from there. But as the time went on, I started to feel like I was being watched. I even started to experience some form of sleep paralysis. Never saw anything during those episodes, but I knew I couldn't move, like someone was sitting on me. Then one day, we had our relatives come and stay with us, and I ended up sleeping in the living room. So when I slept in the living room, I could see into the kitchen. And I remember turning towards the kitchen at around 1 to 2 a.m. in the night, and I saw a woman with long black hair, white dress, standing in front of the fridge. Of course, me being young and thought logical, oh, probably my mom or my aunt. I turned around and went back to sleep. The next day when I woke up, at the breakfast table, I was asking every female relative what they were doing in the kitchen at such a time of night. And nobody was in the kitchen at that time, nor anybody had that white dress before they went to bed or at the breakfast table. And I noticed one of my aunts went quiet once I started talking about a woman in a white dress. And we finished breakfast and went to a Buddhist temple. I remember I thought that was pretty weird. And nothing more really happened after we went to the temple to get some blessings. Once we went back home from Thailand, we asked my aunt to ask the owner of the house a little bit about the history of it. And as it turns out, there were not one, but two women who committed suicide there. One inside the house and one just in front of the house. Oh, also, an electrician died there too. My dad passed away when I was 13. I remember coming home from the hospital after, and on the radio was the train song 
calling all angels. The song also played on while on the way to his funeral and during his funeral, the little music they play before everything starts. The song started popping up during special events, birthdays, graduations, etc. It was just a sign to my family that my dad was there with us. Fast forward to me being 22. My boyfriend at the time and I were on our way back from celebrating Christmas with his family about an hour away. We decided to order some food to pick up and take home to eat. While he's inside grabbing it, my dad's favourite song started playing. Not calling all angels, his actual favourite song. He comes back with the food and I say to him, this was my dad's favourite song. I haven't heard it in almost 10 years. I want to finish it before we start driving again. And we do. Not even a minute later we leave. As we're driving, the car in front of us slams into the back of the car in front of them. Turns out there was a massive 15 car pile up. We luckily, miraculously even, were able to avoid it and the wreck stopped with the car in front of us. Had we not stopped, we would have been right in it. Chances are we wouldn't have made it. A lot of fatalities, unfortunately. There was a weird calming feeling in the car and I started crying. I said, oh my God, I think my dad just saved us. And the song completely switches mid song to calling all angels. This was almost 10 years ago and I'll never forget it. I also should mention we were on a country station. So there was absolutely no reason for that song to even play. So, my best friend's mom died the day before he was going to tell her he was going to have a baby girl. A couple of days after her death, I saw her in a dream, but it was a lucid dream that I'm used to. So I get confused at the setting of the dream, it kind of changes on me. And I see her just standing there, not facing me. I go toward her and just ask her name as a question. She turns around, smiles, and just says yes. I just got confused, but had to tell her. You would finally be a grandma of a little girl. Thought you should know. Again, she smiled and said, I know, thank you. Tell him, my friend. I'm happy for them and will always love them all. Then she kind of disappeared and I woke up. I've had many experiences before in my life and I think she found it easy to come and talk to me. I'm guessing I'm like a spirit magnet at this point. Yes, I told him after the funeral as we put her to her final rest. He agrees with me that I am most likely an easy access for that kind of thing. The second flat I ever rented was in Camberwell, London. It's a low rise block, probably from the 1960s, and I was renting, living there on my own. Now, a few things happened during the first few months of my stay. I'd come home from work and a few kitchen unit cupboards would be open. No biggie. Can I be sure I closed all the cupboards at 7.30 this morning after I rushed breakfast? This happened more than a few times. Then I came home to my breakfast bowl smashed in the middle of the kitchen floor. Pretty sure I left it on the side where it wouldn't fall off, but again, it fell off, so maybe I didn't. Turning point for me was one night, while fast asleep, my bedroom door slammed shut, very loudly. Now, I always sleep with my door an inch or two open, and I know doors can close on their own, but th this must have had some good force behind it. Anyway, I decided to put my four-legged chair up against the handle of my bedroom door. It wouldn't have worked if you were to move the handle, as the chair wasn't high enough, but it made me feel better. I woke up minutes before my alarm, usually to find the chair facing the opposite way round, the back facing away from the door. Now maybe I did some sleepwalking, maybe I did it, but that was enough for me. I packed a bag, grabbed my wallet and keys, and while still in my dressing gown, 
drove to my parents. I informed my landlord that I was moving out immediately. Keep the deposit, I'm out. I think the place is haunted and I'm a wimp to that sort of thing. He laughed. Funny enough, he said, you're not the first person to say that. I'll give you a deposit. So I recently started a security guard job for the graveyard shift. The building has 12 floors, roof access, and two parking garages for reference. No one but me and my partner are supposed to be in the building overnight. Also, you need a key card to use the elevator or get in the doors to the stairwell. Anyway, the first night, one of the motion activated toilets went off when no one was near it. We had to do a bathroom patrol. It happened right when we opened the door on a vacant floor. A week ago, I was doing a patrol from the 12th floor mechanical room. As I left the room into the stairwell, the rooftop door was being rattled and slightly banged on. I ran up there and there was nothing. I assumed it was a bird or something. I started my way down and then the 11th floor door started jiggling. I jog my way down because it's my job and I had to go there anyway. I swipe my key and there's no one yet again. It was quiet besides toilets and walkie talkies going off when we weren't touching it. Last night, I was doing bathroom patrol at 4 a.m., listening to my music in one ear. I get to the 11th floor to start and I hear footsteps behind me. I pull out the headphones while turning around, getting ready to tell them to get out. Yet again, no one. But right as those footsteps stopped, there were heavy footsteps on the floor above me, but then they stopped right above me when I figured out where they were coming from. After I got out of that floor into the stairwell and shut the door, I heard it sound like it was trying to open, but wasn't moving. There isn't any wind inside the building and nothing showed up on the security cameras. I might try to record tonight. Not sure if I'm allowed to do that, but I'll have to ask. For the last four or five years, I've been witnessing a shadowy figure in my parents' bedroom. I'd like to say a bit more about it, but there really isn't much I can say, other than it resembles a human, but has no features. The way it holds itself is very rigid, and overall it's massive. The only defining thing, which sounds way Pacific and rather strange, but the figure always appears to be wearing a 1950s bowler hat but as if it was fused to it and part of it. It's safe to say that the first time I saw it, I freaked out. I ran straight to my mom and told her what I had seen. She's a big believer in anything paranormal, me, not so much, and told me that it's nothing to be scared of and she didn't think it was anything malicious. After about the 10th time of seeing it, I got used to seeing this rather large human looking thing just sitting on my father's side of the bed, almost staring straight towards the door. I even started seeing it so much that I would greet it so I wasn't so afraid of it, but I never felt truly safe. About a year after the first time I saw the figure, I spoke to my sister about it and she told me that she had been seeing the same thing from time to time and I finally felt like someone actually believed me. That didn't mean that I would stop seeing the figure at all. Three years later and in 2020, I was still seeing the shadowy figure on my father's side of the bed, and I would pretty much shrug it off at this point, no longer afraid of it, and to be very honest, I almost completely forgot about it. Then around February in 2020, things started getting weird. I, for whatever reason, stopped seeing the figure altogether. Consciously, I didn't really care or think about it, but it was always in the back of my mind. Shortly after I stopped seeing him, I dealt with episodes of sleep paralysis. At first I thought nothing of it and thought it was where I was on a new medication and was rather stressed. But slowly, the sleep paralysis started to get weird and slightly terrifying. I would wake up 
and feel like I was being watched by something, but I could never determine where from. This carried on for weeks, and each time it was the same thing. Until one day, I was laying down, feeling exhausted at this point. I knew what was going to happen when I fell asleep, and I didn't really care. So I laid down and prepared for the worst. Once again, I think I wake up, but this time I know something is wrong. I feel like I'm being held down to the mattress. When I feel like I'm being watched again, I try to frantically look around, but I can't. And that's when I notice it. This figure I've been seeing in my parents' room for years now, standing at my door, facing me. The only way I can explain how the thing looked was, I felt as if it had eyes, and they were directly staring into me. But there were no eyes visible. After what felt like hours of just being start, stared at, this thing lunged through the door, and I woke up instantly. Since then, I haven't had another sleep paralysis episode. I thought that would be the end of everything, but I then started to see the figure again in my parents' room, but it was no longer sitting or looking out of the door. It was standing next to the side of the bed, which my mother now slept on, since they swapped sides. I've only seen it move closer to the door since. I get the feeling that this thing is no longer harmless, and I'm kind of lost on where to look for any sort of answer. I understand that people may not believe me, but I'm just looking for some sort of information that may help me figure out what the fuck is going on. My room is very small and my bed is next to a window. I've been waking up randomly at like 3 or 4 a.m. and seeing a greyish, tall, skinny thing standing across from my bed and it just stares at me and when I close my eyes it opens them it seems to get closer and so I close my eyes and try to sleep my closet also randomly opens and it looks like there's someone sitting in there my floor randomly creaks at night and it sounds like someone is pacing back and forth around my bed and at this point I'm too scared to open my eyes and look I've had a time where I woke up to my blanket being pulled off me and I just stayed still and didn't move because it's aggressive tugging. I tug in my blankets right around me and I sleep alone at night. When I wake up, my blanket is across my room on the floor. I've heard knocking on my window randomly at like 2am. I'm the only one who has a room downstairs. I've also been recently getting sleep paralysis. And for the past two months, I've been having these very vivid gore dreams. I live with my parents who are Christian. No one lived in this house before us, so I don't know really the house was built in the 90s, or sometimes. Sometimes I hear knocking at my door like at 2am, when everyone is asleep, and I leave my door unlocked at night. I don't believe in ghosts, but this is taking me off. Any suggestions are welcome. When I was younger, I had this reoccurring dream that I was with someone at a red light, awaiting the left-hand turn lane to be green. My friend looked at me and said, I'm sorry, but your black bean burger will never compare to my double whopper. The light turned green and we laughed. There was a blue Volkswagen behind us, lost control and I'd wake up. Years of dreams pulled me forcing different scenarios such as pull into the Popeyes, the Blockbuster, the Long Johns, etc. until the blue Volkswagen would spin out of control and I'd wake up. Back to reality. I'm 17 in my first apartment with my good friend. I worked three jobs, but gave up one so I had my first full day off in months. My friend decided to treat me to her favourite taco truck about an hour away. We were joking about it if the beans would have pork fat or not, and I said it would be one of those things I wouldn't ask. She joked about getting meat. I jokingly said, never. Then she said, I'm sorry, but your black bean burger will never compare to my double whopper. I went blank. We turned left. There was a blue Volkswagen behind us. 
I didn't know what to do, but as we passed the Popeyes, I told her to drive carefully because the blue Volkswagen was about to lose control. I told her to stay ahead of it. They sped up next to us and she sped up to get further ahead of it. And the fucker lost control and in a four lane highway hit each one. We were holding hands and crying, but didn't stop. I had told her about this dream, but not the specific line she would say. The tacos were not that good, which is the worst part. I hate reading super lengthy stories with a million different additional details that are supposed to create atmosphere, but actually just distract from what's being said. So I'm gonna try and be as brief and straight to the point as possible. So, the parents were going to a party and were supposed to be home nine-ish, but rang me saying that they wouldn't be back until midnight. So it was my job to put the kids to bed, which I had no problem with. They are the sweetest, most well-behaved kids I've ever met. It got to 9.30 and the kids brushed their teeth, got their books and went to bed. I tidied up, sat down, did a little homework, I'm 17, and then FaceTimed my friend. This is a religious family and there are crosses on some of their walls. I heard what sounded like someone knocking on the front door, but it was about quarter past 10 and the parents usually message me when they're almost home. And of course, they have keys. So I automatically suspected it wasn't them. I checked and there was nobody at the door. So I just sat back down on the couch and got carried away talking to my friend again. Then the same knocking, literally knock, knock, knock. They have guinea pigs and I started to suspect it was those guys nibbling on the cage or fucking around. So I went and checked, but they were in their little home thing. I still believed it was them, but as I was leaving the room, I saw the wooden cross that was nailed to its head on the wall, lifted from the bottom and it dropped three times. Knock, knock, knock. As though some force was lifting the bottom half that wasn't nailed and dropping it, like a door knocker. I just froze and my friend was like, what, what? I tiptoe ran back into the living room. I don't know what the fuck caused that. I started to think maybe it was one of the kids jumping from upstairs, causing the walls to shake. But the cross is on the wall between the kitchen and dining room, and directly above was the parents' room in the bathroom. So unless they were in their parents' room or the bathroom jumping up and down in threes, it doesn't really make sense. Plus, I was almost adamant that they were asleep. Perhaps coincidentally, the homework I was doing was philosophy which can often be very anti-religion, anti-God. In fact, I was actually writing an answer to this question. Is the Western idea of God illogical? Probably not the most respectful homework to do in the house of religious people, but hey, maybe there was God showing me he's real. Or maybe not. <laughs> 